Melissa Smith is a holistic health coach specializing in digestive distress and anxiety. A former corporate plane chaser, Melissa focuses on working with individuals who face IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and anxiety, providing support across the daily challenges of balancing life, career, and health. Melissa believes that self-love, forgiveness, and freedom are the keys to finding your true joy. She is a certified holistic health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. She holds a bachelor's degree in health education and exercise science and a master's degree in cardiovascular rehabilitation. Melissa, are you ready to rock this? She is. Boom. You are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you so much for being here today with us. We appreciate you, and we are excited to dive into an amazing interview today. Awesome. I am excited to be here. Yes. Awesome. 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 So before we go any further, we dive into the question of the day, which is based on the theme of the day, which today is rising from the ashes. So Melissa, how have you related to this concept of being a phoenix and rising from the ashes? Uh, how have you related to it? How have you brought that to your clients? You know, how does this concept show up for you in your life? Yes, absolutely. It's it's that's kind of my story is being down and in, in, in my muck and working through it and figuring out how to really find the joy back in life and get myself back together. And I, I totally relate to rising from the ashes. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. So is there any specific way you've seen it um, make a difference for you? Is the, the perspective of, you know, being knocked down and getting back up, is there any time in particular that you saw that really shine in your life or that you had to live that, you had to embrace it or a time in your life where you had to learn it to live it? Yes. Yes. When I was really in the depths of my struggle mm -hmm. and one time in particular, I was in my living room, literally having so much anxiety mm. and was on my knees, just begging for someone to get rid of the pain that I was having. And I, I, I was, I had a knife in my hand and I was cutting at my, my wrist. And that was a really, really low point for me. And I was just begging for the pain of my anxiety and my digestive issues and mm. not feeling like I was worthy enough and deserving of this amazing life at that point. And that was a turning point for me because I had to really dig deep and say, you know, look at myself and say, do, do I love who I am? And at that point I did not, I, I honestly, I hated who I was and what, what was happening in my life. And it was time for a change. Wow. Thank you for going there right off the bat. And thank you for trusting us and our audience to, to hold the space for you because we all are going through our own journeys. And I think it's, it's through the ability to see ourselves in other people and acknowledge that relationship and that we're all really connected as one anyways. Um, so important. So, you know, who knows who you sharing that, like how, how you just shared that, who knows who you could have just impacted or saved or, you know, really given hope again. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the more that we can talk about our pain points and our, be vulnerable and be real with people, mm. that makes us more relatable. And then other people don't feel so alone because mm. I was so alone at that point. Mm. I, mean, I dropped my knees and I was sobbing, yeah. was uncontrollably sobbing. And you know, it was a low point, but I know that there's people out there that can, that know if other people can get out of that and rise out of that, that there's hope for them. And I, I actually, I have a tattoo on my wrist where I used to, to cut out and it actually, it says breathe on it. Mm -hmm. And it's just a reminder to me every day or in those moments where I'm feeling anxious or things are not going right to mm -hmm. stop and pause and breathe and be grateful for what I do have. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. 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 Um, thank you. This is, this is just warm and tender and juicy and loving and, um, so great just to start off with. So 
Melissa, why don't you share with our audience a little bit more about what you're doing today, what you're you're creating in the world and, and the impact that you're out making in, in people's lives. Yes. So I stepped away from corporate America. I was in the medical device industry for over 15 years um, in clinical research. So I have a really heavy background in clinical research and the medical device sales. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it took a toll on, on me. I loved what I did, but it was very stressful. And I have suffered from anxiety since I was a small human being. Mm -hmm. And because of a, a traumatic experience that happened to me. And so I carried all of this shame and this guilt with me. And I continued as I went through my corporate career, looking for someone to fill that, that void. I was looking for an authority figure to give me approval and validate my reasoning for being there. My reason for having some existence in the world. Yeah. And I, I, in turn, also developed IBS because of a sickness. And I had the chicken pox when I was like 19-ish or something. And I had them down my digestive system and it just wreaked havoc on, on my functioning. And so that combination of that anxiety and my digestive issues, just as I kept climbing the corporate ladder and the stress was just getting more and more challenging, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, I couldn't function. And I, I honestly have hidden it very, very well. Uh, and, and I've had people reach out to me, you know, old coworkers reach out to me recently saying, I had no idea that you were going through this. Mm. And, uh, it was an internal battle with your mind of not feeling good enough and not feeling worthy. And on top of it, dealing with all of these stomach issues. So I was, you know, bloated, constipated, diarrhea, all of the above, never a happy, happy medium in there. And realizing I was not being true to myself. I was really playing the wallflower game and kind of stepping back and letting everybody else um, have their, have their light, have their, the light shine on them. And I wasn't taking part in it. And it, it was really stifling. Mm. And I kept putting myself into these environments where I, I was dimming my own light because I thought that if I shined and I expressed myself, that it was going to take something away from other people. Mm. And, I, and I didn't realize that. But the further I kept going along, these situations kept happening and I was just more and more challenged and more stressed out and depressed and I didn't understand what was going on. And I wasn't happy. I was not happy at all. Mm -hmm. And I got fired from multiple jobs. I mean, just things just did not work out. Mm -hmm. And about five, six years ago, I really took a turn to really understand what was going on. And I, I actually ended up in the ER sick and with mono. I because mean, you I were looking, many... because you were curious, you're like, what's going on? <laughs> yes. I mean, how many people, you know, in their thirties get mono and I'm like, <laughs> what's happening here? Well, I was, I was right. My body was just completely exhausted. I was at that point of you're in that fight or flight, mm. you know, and usually you come down from it. Mm. Well, I was staying up there and yet I was completely exhausted at the same time. So it's literally like you have pinpricks happening to your body all the time. Mm. You can't sleep. You're an insomniac. Anything you eat is just like going right through. My brain was foggy. I, you know, it just, I wasn't functioning at the highest level and I was exhausted, exhausted beyond belief. I mean, I was traveling for my job, like two, three, sometimes four nights a week, yeah. traveling to different cities. And the best sleep that I was getting was on the plane. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's not normal. That's not mm -hmm. a normal life. Mm -hmm. And you know, having that two by four and getting stuck in the ER, I, I had to take a spin and do a 360 and really get it together. So I, I actually ended up taking about a year off from work mm -hmm. before I stepped back in. And in that meantime, I, you know, really took charge of my nutrition and what was going on. And I reached out to other practitioners, whether it was naturopaths or acupuncturists, Chinese medicine, I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. And I just revamped my entire life and health and got myself back together. But it still took a couple more years before I really 
realize that what I should be doing is helping other women who are having these same challenges mm. because I had stumbled and fumbled around for 20 years of suffering and being in pain and, you know, finally figured out what worked for me. And I didn't take any medication or any crazy supplements or anything out there. I was, I was able to figure it out on my own working with all these different people. Mm -hmm. So my programs basically pull all of that experience in and help women navigate that path to feeling better about themselves. And it really starts with self-love and self-respect because I didn't have that. And it took a lot of work for me to be able to get there. So that that's really what I bring to my clients. Mm -hmm. wow. That's powerful. So you went through these challenging times of, um, you know, being in corporate America and just like, overwhelmed, stressed out, you know, like trying to be a high performer, prove yourself, be enough and get the accolades and stuff. Meanwhile, your body's like, whoa, Melissa, you need to chill out. You need to slow down you need to stop and just like relax. But you kept pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And like it would have disastrous effects and, and illness. And like um, you talked about the, the two by four. And, um, so tell us like, what was the story around that? Yeah, it was really, you know, I, it was Labor Day weekend mm -hmm. and it was late at night. It was like nine o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, I think I got the flu or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, should I call my girlfriend to come and get me? Should I call an ambulance? Oh no, I can drive myself. I'm an independent woman. I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those thoughts. And I, I ended up driving myself, mm -hmm. but it was that knowing that I, I really, I had done it to myself, yeah. not realizing what was going on, but I was doing it to myself mm -hmm. and, you know, getting that diagnosis and you're just sitting there going, how is this happening? Yeah. I thought I was taking care of myself. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've got this great corporate career and my yeah. life is great, but then in hindsight, I looked at it and my career was everything to me. Like nothing else mattered. I wanted to climb the corporate ladder so bad, like mm. anybody's business. And I was going to do anything and everything I could to make it happen mm -hmm. at the sacrifice of my own health and well-being. Yeah. When, when you got the diagnosis, like what was that like for you? Like what, what did you feel? What was the emotional experience that you went through? Yeah, it was, it was like I failed. It was yeah. like I failed because I, I hadn't, done everything that I, I thought I was supposed to be doing. Mm. And I was there by myself on top of it. So you just, there was this loss, mm. this kind of, a, a very much of a grieving process because I knew mm. that I had to make a change. And literally the ER doc was like, you can't go back to work. Mm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> So I ended up literally taking, I think I took like three or four weeks off. Uh -huh. And in that time, I, I was in bed like 16 hours a day sleeping. Mm. And even the time that I was out of bed, like I could barely function. Mm. I was so, so beyond exhausted. My adrenals were just shot. I remember sitting on the carpet and sitting on the floor in the, in the, in the bedroom looking out the window, like, what am I doing with my life? Like, mm. how did I get here? Like, I can't even make a simple decision as to what I actually really want to eat. Mm. It was, it got down to the simplest things like that because I had just been running, running, running and eating whatever was available and not paying attention to it and not paying attention to what I was eating and how it actually made me feel. Mm that I didn't know what would make me feel better or what would make me feel worse or what I actually wanted or what my body actually craved. Cause I wasn't paying attention. Mm. And, and I think women, especially women, because we're trying to do everything for everybody. I call it the E personality. We do everything for everybody um, with the exclusion of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that was the mode I was in. I had no other mode. And 
it was figuring out what, who am I and what do I really like and, and who do I want to be and where do I go from here? But I was also in that state of shock and slightly paralyzed because I had never been in this position before. I was always that, you know, go, 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 high achiever. I can do anything. I can do everything. And I've done, you know, all these things so far in my career, but yet I can barely drive myself to the grocery store right now. Mm. And like, how is that possible? How did, how did that happen? Yeah. So I know that there's women out there who may not be at that far end, but they're somewhere in between where right now they're just kind of living in a bubble, so to mm. speak, if you will. And they're in a brain fog, they're irritable and you know they snap at their partners they snap at their children for no apparent reason and they they don't really understand what's going on mm. and what we don't understand is the the connection between our brain health and our guts mm. and what we're actually eating and how it affects our entire body it's not just let's look at this and let's look at that or let's look at our cardiovascular system and you know then our look at our orthopedic system or mm you know, endocrinology or whatever it is, it's treating the whole body at, at, as one system. Mm. So what, what were the steps that you took to educate yourself on how to treat your body better? Like, what was that process like? Well, one was actually listening to what was going on mm. and paying attention to how I felt after I ate certain foods. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I knew from my digestive issues um, certain things didn't agree with me. So gluten didn't agree with me. Dairy didn't agree with me. And as I progressed, I found other foods that don't necessarily agree with me. I can eat them occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the first point. And then, you know, really taking a look at how I felt after I immediately ate the food. And then also being mindful of eating. And I... <laughs> This is a funny story that I've never shared and I, it just popped into my head. So I thought I would talk about it. But one thing, because I was traveling so much, I would, I would get home and I would crave ham sandwiches. It sounds incredibly crazy. <laughs> ham sandwiches. Yes. I just wanted two slices of bread, some mayo and ham. Sometimes there was some lettuce in there too. But, and I, I thought this is so weird. Why do I want this? And then every time I ate the sandwich, I had to sit on the floor. And it sounds incredibly crazy. So I was talking to my, my acupuncturist at the time, and I said, why am I craving this food like this? This is weird. This, I've never had this experience before. And we got to talking, and we're like, well, you're craving the salt, hmm. one. But then it's the ham, because the pigs are actually low to the ground, so you need the grounding piece of hmm. it. Yes. Wow. And I was so caught off in this other place and I wasn't recognizing what my body was actually craving wow. and it was craving being grounded and being at home and being in that type of an environment rather than up in the air flying and going to other places. Mm. And we, we don't recognize that. So there's just one simple little piece that I, I recognize. So now I'm like, okay, when I feel like I need to sit on the floor, or I need to walk around barefoot. Mm. I do it. Mm. I'm, cu I'm curious. Um, is there something in your life, in your childhood, when you're growing up younger, that had you want to be like higher, like elevation higher? Um, you know, like, did you conquer some fear of heights? Did you, were you afraid of heights? Did something about being high up? Did you have like an activity with someone you loved or cause like there's something about grounding that your body needed that you hadn't been providing it because you'd probably been overcompensating to be like literally higher up than than normal like there was no high enough like i need to get higher i need to climb the corporate ladder i need to get up in in the sky and travel and be higher like so did anything like that show up for you well i think oof, you're just gonna go right right let's to the go start. let's go <laughs> um i really think that because i i was sexually abused um, from a family member when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And 
I really think that it stems from that out of body experience mm. and wanting to get away from it. And so you're just looking physically, uh, literally and physically to get out of it. And so you're always going higher, higher, higher. Mm. And then once, you know, I got sick essentially because I was avoiding the pain of, of that situation for so long. I mean, literally decades and, you know, not paying attention to what was going on in my body because you're housing all of that naked emotion. And like my body was a wreck. I had pain. Like it's, I felt like a 70 year old woman mm -hmm. because I had back pain. I had neck pain. I had hip pain. I had all of this pain. And a lot of it was, you know, in that sacral area, mm -hmm. which is, you know, where your sexual reproductive organs are at. And I had so much pain down in that area. I can't even begin to describe it. Um, but it, it, it was, it, it was from wanting to get out of that experience and not have to relive it. So I was in that state of avoidance. And so when I ended up in the ER and they're like, you're sick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, what, what does this, what does this look like? I don't understand. And really working with intuitive life coaches and processing everything that was happening. And I also worked with a talk therapy as well and understanding that it's okay what happened and it doesn't define who I am. But, but helping myself get through that was one of the most critical points mm. and also a turning point where I, you know, you, you look in the mirror and you actually have to learn to accept yourself and learn to love yourself. Mm. And I, I um, recently posted about this, that I hated myself so much because I wanted to avoid working through those issues that when I was in talk therapy, one of the things I had to do was stand in front of the mirror naked and look myself in the eye and say, I love you. And it was absolutely the most brutal thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like when you don't love yourself and you don't love the skin you're in and you're looking at all your flaws and you think that you're ugly and unattractive and you know, standing there and having to say this morning and night and it was just it's so, so challenging. Like I can't even talk about it right now. Um, but I, I had to do it and I would do it until I had tears running down my face mm -hmm. because that was the only way that I could, could get through it. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that other side after all the struggle and all the hurdles and and now i can stand there and look at myself and say oh my god you are amazing look at the person that you are and love all of myself and the skin that i'm in and my chicken puck scars and my tiger stripes and you know the little extra weight i carry here and there and my you know whatever it is um it's an amazing experience to get to the other side so I know that there's, there's women out there who are struggling with that. And I just want them to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I send out all my love because I know how painful it is. Thank you for sharing all of that. And, um, I really acknowledge you for, um, putting in the work in yourself to be enough, to get over that, that hump, you know, and standing in the mirror, telling yourself that you love yourself. Um, just really like your commitment to having an amazing, extraordinary life. And now you're sharing this 
with these women who are going through the same thing. That's not easy. And uh, thank, thank you for, for sharing it here with us. Thank you for developing your message. And the more times you do this and share this, the easier it'll get. Doesn't make it doesn't make it um, you know okay or painless or anything like that. But um, you'll start being able to articulate it. I know for me personally, like I I got arrested um, and I was in jail for two nights. Luckily, charges were dropped, case was dismissed. But I let that define me for a number of years, thinking that like I'm bad, people don't want to be around me. You know, I'm a liability, I'm a risk, whatever whatever stories I made up. But as I started sharing it more and more, I was able to detach myself from from the meaning or the the identity that that was still me. So um, for you, Melissa, and for everyone listening, when you start to share the, sto- the story and the journey and the facts, the things that happened and the feelings that you felt, it's important to to stay in tune with that and, and stay connected with that, those feelings because they, there's lessons, there's lessons there, but not own it as if that's like part of your identity still. Like you healed that we, we healed that we integrated it. It's, it's like a gift at this point that we've been given to share with other people. Um, so I, I'm really grateful that you're, mastering this gift and sharing it with more people so that it can make a bigger difference. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because I've also recently had some comments that are like, well, you seem happy all the time. And, and, you know, I love getting on, you know, live and, and doing podcasts and talking to other people. And I'm very outgoing to begin with. And I get excited. I love mm-hmm. talking to people. And so they, they just assume that I don't have any pain or yeah. it wasn't, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it was, yeah. I've just, I've accepted it, but I don't carry it with me everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a part of who I am and I want to be able to reach out to other people to know that they are not alone and that there is help. And there are people out there that want to help you and who know what you're going through. So, you know, I just don't want people to have to struggle like I did mm. and, and understanding what was happening and being afraid of what was happening mm. and feeling like you're having this out of body experience mm. and, and knowing that you're n- the biggest thing for me was knowing that I wasn't alone because I felt so, so alone and I felt disconnected from everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's a common feeling that I'm alone I don't like nobody understands me. No one gets me. I'm different. Um, I totally, totally get that. So how are you sharing this message and cultivating your, your brand and impacting your clients with this now? Like, what does that look like? And, and, um, you know, like, what are you, what are you teaching? What are you sharing with, with people? Yeah. So my, my company is called Healthy Joyful Living, okay. and I, I chose that really about living a healthy lifestyle and bringing the joy back into your life because mm. that was what I was missing, and I want to send that out in, into the world. Yeah. I want women to feel vibrant and sexy and alive and get the sass back in their life. Mm. and that re- that really is my message and also you know really talking about digestive issues and that connection between the brain and and that alone our nutrition is the foundation for everything mm. it if it it's it's a ripple effect and it all comes back to self love self respect and knowing that you're enough and you are amazing just as you are and you know accepting who you are mm. And really loving and embracing the skin that you're in. Hmm. What do you find is working best to really empower women to feel that way and show up in that way? And what are some of the challenges that you, um, as a facilitator and a coach, have to deal with? Um, and then how do you deal with that? Yeah, great question. I Well, the biggest thing is women getting out of this concept of, I need to follow a diet. Hmm. 
I need to eat these certain things. And it's, it's, I don't like the word diet because <laughs> I, I mean, anybody that hears that, I mean, you instantly constrict and you're like, uh, I'm on a diet. Mm. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Mm. And in that lifestyle, there should be nothing off limits. You should be able to eat what any, whatever you want, mm. but also know that if there are certain foods that your body does not or does react to that you can't eat those. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you want a piece of chocolate cake, have a piece of chocolate cake, because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're just gonna crave it and then you're gonna have a binge later. And then we've done this whole other cycle that we're going through. Mm -hmm. So it's getting over that stigmatism that's around diets. I, I just throw that out. And every person is different. There's no one thing that is gonna, or nutrition plan that's gonna work for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest misconception out there. And so there's a bazillion different diets or whatever mm -hmm. ways to eat, you know, the blood type diet or the keto or mm -hmm. macros or intuitive eating or, you know, clean eating, whatever it is, just find something that works for you and sticking with it mm -hmm. and sticking with it long term. And like I said, if it's constricting, you're not going to stick with it. And, and how is that helpful for anyone? Mm. And the other thing is really that mindset because I dealt with all of this chatter in my head and it was always negative, negative, negative. I'm not good enough for this. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve this, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. All of that gremlin chatter going on. And how did I quiet that down? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the way the best way to get that to stop. Hmm. And it really is about being mindful and doing a gratitude journal. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have dance parties in the morning because that's me jazzed I up. love it. Um, so, you know, and I, I put the headphones on and I yeah. just go to town and that gets me excited. So listening mm -hmm. to music, I'm a huge music buff and, uh, you know, getting out in nature too, taking a walk and, and no, no distractions, just mm -hmm. be out there, take your dog out for a walk or be with your kids, go outside. Even if it's in the middle of the day and you've only got 10 minutes, do it because it's going to break out of your pattern of yeah. whatever thoughts are going on. And you're going to be able to look at the situation that was challenging to you in a completely different way. And you're probably going to find a solution to whatever that was. Yeah. Because you're not sitting there in the muck of it. Like, okay, let's get out of it and let's figure out another way to solve it. Mm -hmm. So it's really positioning yourself and asking different questions mm -hmm. to get the results that, that you want. Love it. And we got Denise in the audience saying, Melissa, you're absolutely right. That's beautiful. Melissa, what's up, CB? What's up, Denise? Love you, Denise. You're awesome. Superstar. Um, so, you know, I really think that with the, the mindset and these different actions that you can take, you know, loving yourself, dance parties, there's lots of different and, and, and even the diet, right? Or the, the lifestyle, not diet, the lifestyle choice, the, the different foods that we get to choose to eat that uh, make us feel good, that empower us. Um, there's so many different options and uh, so much, you know, customization depending on each person's lifestyle and, and what they're going through, who they are. Um, how do you deal with all the variety? How do you how do you, you know, create an effective plan or help people like execute on that strategy? If there's so much diversity and so many different unique perspectives and lifestyles. Yeah, absolutely. And I, the, one of the biggest things is keep it simple. Mm. Don't go crazy. Cause initially if you're implementing so many changes, mm. It just gets overwhelming and you just people just throw their hands up and be like, I can't do this. Yes. You know, and as far as food, you know, we want to eat nutritious food because if we're eating processed food, even if you're you're eating it and you're chewing it, you're still not getting the nutrients you need. So you're actually deficient. And so your your body is just hanging on to every possible thing that you're putting in it. 
And if you're putting all this processed stuff in it, your body's not functioning at the same level. So you have a communication gap going on and helping people to understand that you literally are what you eat. What you're eating right now is what your body's going to be in six months. Mm. And separating that, I'm, I'm not saying that all processed food is bad. Mm. I eat it. And if you want to get, you know, nitty gritty on it. And I mean, protein powders are processed. Yep. You know, people don't want to like really talk about that. That's kind of, ooh, let's not talk about that. It is. It's highly processed. Yes. And vitamins that you're getting over the counter mm-hmm. are processed. But we, we have to include vitamins and minerals because of the soil is so mm. depleted of that. We have to include that. And, you know, the big controversy between organic and non-organic. Well, if you have three options, so I have the processed foods, I have conventional or I have organic, eat the conventional. Because mm. your body is going to process that differently than it's going to process the processed. Mm foods. So if you have those options, because there's all the, you know, um, the dirty dozen and the eat clean and all of that, I try not to get people overwhelmed with that. Mm -hmm. Just eat fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, the dirty dozen has more pesticides on it, but don't worry about that right now. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't over overwhelm yourself with that and just keep the recipe simple Mm -hmm. and easy. And, you know, teaching people how to meal prep, even if it's just for, you know, five days or entire week, just helping them understand how to do that Mm -hmm. and not reach for that process stuff and the little, you know, pre-bagged 100 calorie, whatever. (laughs) Don't do that. Just chop up some apples at home, you know? Yep. Um, Get, get out you know, I think it's what 18 almonds or a quarter cup of almonds as a mm-hmm. serving. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, nuts are really easy to go overboard on. Yeah. I mean, they taste really good Yeah, and you know, it's good, healthy fat for you too. But portion control is another, is another problem that, I mean, just in general, people have a challenging time with it. And I do too. I mean, there are times when I'm like, Oh no, man, I want like more, give me more. <laughs> And sometimes that's okay, but yeah. knowing the limit balance at the moderation same time too, yes, yeah. and understanding you know how sugar affects your body, and you know alcohol is a sugar too, yep, and paying attention to that, so just helping people understand that hmm. and also taking a look at their movements, like yeah. what types of exercise are they doing? And there's, there's some studies coming out now that talk about the correlation between people who are consistent, regular exercises, mm-hmm. exercisers, mm-hmm. and how their micro, their gut microbiome is actually healthier than people who don't exercise. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And if you really think about it, so if we're not being mindful about our chewing, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you're eating. And we're in such a hurry and we're just shoveling it in and you're not chewing it thoroughly. Well, now your stomach and your digestive tract has to work harder to process that food. And so you're increasing, you know, the acidic juices that are in there and um, the bad bacteria, you know, you have the good bacteria and you have bad bacteria. Well, when your body has to work harder, it starts to produce the bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's where you get all the stomach upset. You get the bloating, constipation, diarrhea, all of that stuff, cramping, the whole nine yards. So people don't understand that chewing effectively and efficiently is critical for how your body is functioning. And then if you're putting processed stuff in your body on top of it, you're just adding to that unknowingly because we don't pay attention. One one of the things that um, Glenn, who's just on right before you, He's talking about, you know, putting the fork down between every bite, every, every, uh, you know, every bite. I was like, dang, that's crazy. Like what a, what a way to train yourself, you know, and like put the fork down, chew, you know, like chew and enjoy it and savor it and, and prepare and prepare your body to be able to digest it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, 
do you know if if we don't chew the food enough and it like goes through our body more kind of whole and not not chewed up enough not digest, digested enough is that more strenuous on our organs because it's like like not processed or would you say chewing it up more like cuz it cuz otherwise it's getting more of the nutrients of the negative not so great nutrients you know if it just passes through us but we don't digest it then we don't get as many as the negative um, nutrients. If it's processed food, right? I'm talking about processed. I'm thinking about like a cheeseburger, right? If I chew up a cheeseburger and I didn't chew it up enough, and you know, portion of it is like not chewed and it goes through my, you know, system, uh, and then a portion of it is super chewed and that like gets digested. You know, which one would I prefer if it's a processed food? Well, the more you chew it, the higher chances of your body actually absorbing it. Right. Right. So it's, it's when you're like, you chew three times and then swallow it. Yeah. And it's still like in a chunk basically right. that your body has a harder time digesting that. And that becomes more challenging. And, mm -hmm. and that's where all of these extra lymphocytes and mm -hmm. the, the extra bacteria, the bad bacteria starts kicking in. Because, and, of, because what? Because it's not digested? Because enough? it's not digested and it ha your body has to work harder to break it down because you didn't break it down in your mouth. Mm. Mm. So it's like, so, it's like so going, it's go going, it's, it's going through and you're not, you're not getting it out to the cells. Right. But so if it's not good, healthy food, then we wouldn't want to get it out to the cells anyways. No, no. <laughs> I like to follow an 80, 20 rule, 80% okay. good clean yes. food, 20% processed. Good. But also I'm super selective about what that processed food looks like. And I love my chocolate. So, <laughs> you know, that's not ever going to go away. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, we're, we're coming towards the tail end of this interview and we want to know, is there any other tips or, you know, hacks, health hacks, uh, stuff that we can do to really optimize our vitality, our wellness, uh, anything else that you would recommend, Melissa? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So just eat nutritious food, be mindful about eating and sit down Mm. preferably at the evening meal with your family, mm. no distractions. So turn the cell phone, computer, TV, all of it off and socialize because that is a part of help being healthy too, is being social and interactive mm. with, with your immediate family. Or, you know, even if you're out in a business lunch meeting, turn the cell phone off. I, we all, myself included, have a tendency to keep that thing right there because, oh my gosh, somebody mm. needs me. No, they don't. It can mm. wait. And knowing that it's okay, but they can wait. And then just getting exercise. And my biggest thing and the first thing that I talk to people about is drinking enough water. Amen. Hey. Biggest. Baking. There you go. Yes. <laughs> that, that's absolutely the first thing. Nine times out of 10, you think that you're hungry and you're actually dehydrated and you're thirsty. Yeah. So that I, I cannot stress that one enough. No. Awesome. 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 So uh, again, you know, is there a, a encompassing point that we want to give to our audience an, an invitation to step into a new reality, a new paradigm because of their time invested here today with us? I really think about it's self-love and self-respect mm -hmm. and eating healthy as part of self-respect yeah. and loving yourself mm. and learning to eat right and your body is going to feel so much better when you are eating right and you're exercising on a consistent basis and your brain is going to function so much better and it's it's a ripple effect and it, it flows out into every relationship and it flows out into the community mm -hmm. and your outlook on the world and what you're putting out there and your perspective of what you're putting out there is going to come back to you tenfold and i can't i that's that's my biggest, my biggest message. It's going to come back to you. everything you put out there comes back. And we want to put, 
bright, shiny love and light out there. Absolutely. We are doing that 100%. We had Denise who said, it's harder for our body to break down. So more, um, so more it's chewed, the more it's chewed and that, so it can pull the nutrients out a lot easier and pass on what it doesn't need rather than not getting enough nutrients from poorly chewed food going to waste. Oh. And Denise wow. said, Melissa Smith, you freaking rock. Beautiful <laughs> lady. Thank you. So, thank you, Denise. We love you. Um, so Melissa, how do people stay connected with you and what do they do next? Yes, absolutely. I am on Instagram at healthy, joyful living. Cool. And I'm on Facebook. I do have a healthy, joyful living site on Facebook, but I post my, and I do my live videos on my personal page, mm -hmm. which is Melissa Smith MN. Okay. I mean that way. And I am super excited. I haven't even told you this. I got my website up this week. Yes. So I'm really excited about that. Yes. And I have some freebies up there too. So it's healthyjoyfulliving.co. C-O. Okay. That's C-O. Yes. <laughs> That's C-O. So please, I'd love to connect with people. Awesome. 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 Everyone, you heard it. Connect with Melissa. And that's healthy, healthy, joyful living co is her website. Facebook.com forward slash Melissa Smith M N Mary Nancy. And then the Instagram is healthy, joyful living. So Melissa, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story. And I'm so excited about uh, as you move forward and share it with more people and impact more people and, and develop your impact and your message and your reach and um, just the sky's the limit. You know, you yes. want to talk about, you want to talk about like healing that, that past and actually giving yourself permission to go to the, to the very top. You know, in, in a, in a way that's in integrity, in a way that is, is holistic, that's pure, that is divine. Um, you're on that path. So keep taking steps forward because you're a superstar. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. Love you're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we look forward to having you back again soon. And I hope you have the best day ever. Okay.